happen on the day of Pentecost. It is the same way. The more we preach, the more the word of God can prick the hearts of men. There's no secret. It, it is the word of God that is the active and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword. We know all these verses, but do we really, really think when we are confronted with all the temptations and with all the things of the world? Remember in 1 John? Turn to 1 John chapter 2. What are the things of the world that we need to be refrained? 1 John 2, verse 15, which is very familiar with everybody, but let's just go through again. Do not love the world, nor the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life, is not, not from the Father, but is from the world. Verse 17, And the world is passing away, and also, what? It's last, it's things of the world, it's passing, but the one who does the will of God abides forever. That's right. If we are to abide forever, we are to do the will of God. That's right. We need to do His will. We, do know, we must know what is the will. We must understand what is His will. Christians are to obey and to do His will. The Christian recognizes one law as superior to human authority. That is God's law. We are to obey God rather than men, as in Acts chapter 5, when Paul was in conflict, no? that they were told not to teach, or command you not to teach in his name. You have filled Jerusalem with this doctrine, and intend to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter said to the apostles, and the apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. On this occasion, they were told not to speak, not to teach, not to bring this doctrine, not to say that this man's blood is, you are the one who caused this man. Mm -hmm. Referring to Jesus as they have crucified him on the cross. They were all quick in their heart. They said, oh, you should not do this. And when in this case, when man's law is Contrary to God's law, then we should obey God's law. That's what we need to do. Huh? We need to do. We, 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 we do not follow just because the man said we should not preach. We should continue to preach. And how we can preach is with our lives, with our needs. Huh? Today, uh, my focus is to tell you that we can preach when we live a life of a sermon huh? that people can see one see a sermon. They rather want to see a sermon than hear one. The, the Christian life is also in business, but business life. Huh? The Christian in business life is also a sermon. No frame in the language of slavery. The principles outlined in the New Testament call for a couple of things. First, there must be respect. You should respect your employee. And the employee should Show it to the employer. That's right. We should respect, mutual respect. We should respect. Even though it's a master and slave relationship. As in 1 Peter chapter 2, we can see where, Paul's, uh, where Peter says, uh, we have uh, read in the scripture, 18 and 19. Servants, be submissive to your masters with all respect, not only to those who are good and gentle, but also to those who are unreasonable. It's very hard to follow. You need to be submissive. submissive. And for this, find favor if for the sake of conscience toward God, 
when a man bears up under sorrows when suffering unjustly. So we need to have mutual respect, even to respect those who are unreasonable. Why? The purpose is we can be some of these unreasonable masters to Christ by our quiet and silent spirit. That's right. When we are silent, when we are being reprimanded or we are being uh, falsely accused, and still we are silent. Just like Jesus was silent before he shared us. Then he was dumb. He just keep quiet. It's like a sheep. So we should follow the Master. That's why Christ is our example. That we should follow. There's another one in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1, where it talks about wives. Uh, being submission is the power of the godly life in the home, where the wife can play a part. See, that is an example of a wife submitting to the husbands. Wives need to have submit to husbands so that if any of them are disobedient by the word, they may be warned without a word by the behavior of their wives as they observe their chaste and respectful behavior. So you can win the husband by your example, by your behavior. And you can bring them. You don't have to preach to them. You just have to be yourself. A good behavior. Huh? You can bring them. That is a possibility of the wife being unable to teach, but yet can be bring to Christ. There's no. It's always lives and lives. Preach and practice and walk the talk. We must obey the word. That's right. So that is the thing that I want to share this morning. That we need to be a sermon that people can bring us. Let's turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Verse 2. People are reading us every day. You know, people are reading us every day. And what are they reading? They actually, we are like letters huh? written in our hearts. You are our living epistles. Huh? The letters living, written in our hearts, known and read by all men. When you walk out, people are reading. Oh, this Christian man, oh, this Christian lady, oh, Christian boy. Oh, they are different, the way they speak, the way they respond. Okay? Sometimes you can hear that a lot of people commented, hey, these people never laugh when the, the dirty jokes is being cracked. Why? You, don't, you are not humorous. They say, no, we should not uh, be having all these uh, dirty jokes and to crack. They say, oh, you, you got different, you are different. So, we are, people are reading us, but let us shine our light, that they may see us and glorify the Father. It's, it's not that we just want to be different, just uh, for different sake, for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of Christ. 